verse 9. Luke 18, verse 9. And Jesus spake this parable to certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. That's a strong word. To despise others. Two men went into the temple to pray. I wonder why we come to the temple. Just a thought. And one Pharisee and the other a publican or a sinner. The Pharisee stood, prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as others. Other men are, whatever that word is, crook, unjust, adulterous, or even at this pool here. Then he pulled out his uh, agenda. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes to all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto the heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. How to apologize? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Remove God. And put someone's name there that you have offended, Amen. that you have hurt. Would you be able to say that, be merciful to me, a sinner? I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Go ahead and have your seats, please. Thank you. So let me back up and bring you up to date what we have been talking. All right. Life is about relationships. And whether you know it or not, in a relationship, uh, sometimes there is a friction. Every relationship has potential for friction. But, we are to guard the relationship. We have asked everybody to ask God to forgive you when you mess up. But we have never taught us how to ask a human being to forgive you. We want them to come and ask us to forgive. But we have not apply that it applies to you too. In a life, two kind of peoples whom you have hurt, the other who has hurt you. But either way, forgiveness Apology must come in a picture. Because if you say that you have never hurt anybody, the altar is always open for you. And I'm going to be very candid this morning. Over the last six years, I have done what I'm talking to you. I have gone to the people, ask them, I'm here to ask you, forgive me, but I don't even know 
what I am asking for and they were not kind enough to even tell me what I have done and they left as of last week there was one individual I saw that person in a place in a church and I said I haven't seen this person but you know what I will not leave this building without talking to this one I went over there explained with tears and that person say I know what you're saying is the truth but that's where it is pride I've been teaching you the greatest enemy of peacemaking reconciliation is pride they rather die than say, you know what? I am sorry and let us uh, reconcile and go on. They rather die. And the greatest friend of peacemaking is humility. You humble yourself. You got to. So first message was, you take the ownership of what has happened. I am wrong. I was wrong. I am sorry. And don't use these words by itself. Never use the word, I am sorry alone. Say it, I am sorry for and define it you know what you're sorry for if you are genuine sorry just like this man wouldn't even lift his eyes to heaven and beat his chest got on his knees and say mm, 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 mm. you know what you have done explain it I have done this. And may I say this? It will take a man or it will take a woman to do this. Asking for apology, genuine repentance is not a job of a punk. Real men apologize. Real women apologize. If you don't, in a school of God, forgiveness, forgiveness is a required course. It is not option. You cannot take it or leave it. Because when you do it, it is a sin against that person. And we don't want to look at it like that. And when you say that, don't turn into a blame game. I did it because this and this. If you had, no, 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 you're playing now. You got to come clean. If it is to your wife or to your husband or to your kids. Oh, kids are always wrong. Uh uh, uh uh, uh uh. You don't want to hear it out of the mouth of babes. The truth comes, but you don't want to handle it. Because if you say the word but, it is no longer an apology but a blame game. Number two, 
after you take the ownership. Number two, you come up with the action. Don't ask her, uh, baby, what should I do? Die. <laughs> I'm just trying to be real. Come on now. You come up with the plan. Like I said many times, people go to rehab because the family wants them to go to rehab. They will spend one month or whatever, they come back, be dry for a while, and then go back. I have seen people go to rehab five times. You know why they went to rehab? Because everybody wanted them to go to rehab. They didn't. Until you want. Don't do it for anybody else. Apologizing is not for her or for him. It is for you. You might disagree with me. But you know what? When we keep some mess in us. Talk to David. He said, my bones were aching. All my juices dried up when I didn't come clean. Huh? Let me tell you something. Again, don't say that's the way it is. Maybe the sickness because you need to apologize to somebody. Listen to me now. The juice, the juices of hate. The juices of envy, pain goes inside. And your body is not designed for that. So body don't know how to act. So it reacts. And again, I'm not saying because of... No, no, no. Is it a possibility? I don't know. You have to check your own heart. You have to check your own heart. Search me. God. The heart is most desperately wicked. I don't even know. Please search. If there be any wicked in me, God, you got to help me, God. But you got to come to that point. Then you get sick of this thing. You're trying to sleep and can't sleep. Or when do you see that person? Look at me now. Don't try to hide. Look at me. When you see that person, what happens inside? That tells you what's going on. But before I say anything, let me come straight up here. I have seen it many times. And I cannot. I have heard people say, especially between husband and wife. The husband has been way gone. The wife has been way gone. And now when we talk about forgiveness, listen. Sometimes the churches, sometimes the pastors, sometimes old folks. I'm not giving you a pass today. I'm not old yet. <laughs> Listen, uh, and please, please give me some time. Let me, let, me, let me help you all. They put pressure on that person. You made your bed, he got to lie in it. And the man has been a dog. I, I don't know how else to say. What you all going to do? You can't handle the truth? 
part of the woman was out there over and over, over and over. And then, am I going to tell her? God hate the also you are required. Hey, hey, that's between you and God. Would you leave me alone? All right. Because I remember when I became a pastor, don't even know when was early in the time. There was one beautiful woman in the church. The husband was beating the hell up her every day, choking her and all that. And she called me at 3.30 in the morning. I pull out my 357. Come on, come on now. Uh, I, I'm just going to be real with you all. I don't know what the fool was eating or drinking. I, I have no idea. And I had another gentleman with me. I packed. I went there at 3.30 in the morning. And I looked at her. And I said, child, you're getting in my car. And we're getting out of here. And I said, if you move, you better not move. He sat down there. And we took her out and took him to her mother's place. Amen. What am I going to do? Let him beat her over and over and over in the name of the Lord that you forgive? Amen. Just because your tail is not being whooped. All right. I'm just going to be real because, because when I say this thing, we think that, look, look, you have to live with him. She has to live with you. You decide where your peace is. Yeah, God hates divorce, but God hates abuse too. Remember my message on a triple A? Oh, you forgot. Abuse. Emotional, physical, sexual, financial, don't kind of abuse. Second one was abandonment. The guy left you, got another woman, he's living there and all that, and you, oh, the devil stole him, I'm waiting for him. <laughs> abandonment. Abuse, any kind of abuse, and adultery. That's your choice. I cannot make you. You know why? Because God helped that he changes or she changes. But if he or she doesn't change, then that happens. You know what? You're going to look me up. Where is he? I'm going to take him out. Because he told me. You ain't going to put that pressure on me. I'm going to live 120, 120, and he ain't going to kill me. <laughs> Pastor, are you encouraging divorce? Did I say that? No. So please, And let me explain. Oh, Lord, you are looking at me like got nobody's business. Look here, I'm going to hit it hard and go. Hey, I'll be gone for two weeks. So you can <sighs> lick your wound for two weeks. <laughs> okay, bring it here. Listen to me. How many of you will agree with me? God is full of compassion. Amen. God is full of mercy. Yes. God is full of grace. Is he the same God? He said, my grace door is going to close one of these days. So if God's grace has a limit, my grace <laughs> do you understand? So please let me set you straight up free. Huh? I'm not saying just because he done this thing that you're going to forgive and take him back. That's between you and the Lord. Amen. So don't go out and saying the folk at Covenant Family Church and put me, put me on Facebook and so pastor say that. You better not. That's between you and God. That's between you and God. Between you and God because it was you who said that in the presence of God, 
and the angels and witnesses, they ain't no more there there. Let me go on. So number two, you come up with a plan. Number three, with your own mouth, describe the damage you have done. I have hurt you. I have hurt the children. I have betrayed. I have violated your trust and honesty. I have been dishonest with you. I have messed up our finances. I have stolen from you. I have stolen from the... Describe the pain. And I had mentioned this thing. Why she keeps on bringing this stuff again? Because it was never closed. It was never made whole. It was never resolved. Huh? You never talked about it. So don't come out here and say, I already asked the Lord to forgive me, so now you... <laughs> you all put too much pressure on us little Christians, you all. I'm positionally sanctified. But practically, I'm working on it. Don't act like you are all sanctified. That's our problem. That's the, the guy in the, in the temple. He, he was acting all that. I'm all that. Uh, you may be all that, but uh, I'm still the pastor and I'm still uh, under construction. So please don't go out and say, Pastor, sir, you, you got to do nothing. You got to find your own grace. If your grace has run out, honey, I cannot tell you to stay there. But if you want to, with the help of God, more power to you. I will pray for you. Are we clear? Okay. Don't write to me. I won't be here. <laughs> Say it. I feel your pain. I feel your hurt. I feel your sorrow. I broke your heart. Now, point number four. When you go to the court, you hear that the guy is guilty and he looks at the judge and says, Judge, I throw myself at the mercy of the court, at the mercy of the judge. Okay, let me break it down what it means. Because people ask for mercy and they have no clue. It is convenient. Uh, forgive me. Have mercy on me. And they have no clue. When you, listen to me. When you say, have mercy on me, the guy who is guilty, he's looking at the judge and said, judge, have mercy on me. You know what you are saying? Sir, you are the judge. You have the power to put me away and throw the key away. You have the power. I recognize you have the power. You have the authority. But I appeal to you, sir. Would you have mercy on me? Because when a man or a woman asks for mercy without recognizing that you can kick him to the curb or hurt to the curb, you know what they think? It's a revolving door. Oh, come on, you ain't helping me. I know people don't want to talk about it, but, but I go through this with people. You can't be preaching for 40 years and don't see these things. And nobody wants to check. It's not a revolving door. Wow. I know you ain't hungry because you had too much food. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So this is what you say. Remember, I am sorry for this. I am the owner. I have this plan. Now, this is what you should do. Would you please find in your heart to extend mercy to me and forgive me? Listen to me. Forgiveness is a gift. You cannot deserve it. It is up to that person. It is up to the judge whether he puts that gavel and says, okay, okay, uh, you may go. I, I, I forgive you. Listen, forgiveness is up to the person to give. So don't go over there and say, you know what? I done it all. Hey, hey, look here, look here, look here. Don't use these four points. Oh, pastor say, uh, uh, okay, I'm the owner. I've done this thing. I have a plan. Do. It's not genuine. And you know what? Huh? When it is genuine, you will know it. You know that discerning gift will kick in. Oh, man. You are, mm, last Sunday you were quiet and this Sunday you went quieter. Would you please find in your heart to forgive me? Back off. Back off. Would you please think about it? Thank you, Lord God. Would you please pray about it? Would you please take your time? I don't demand forgiveness. You cannot demand forgiveness. It's a gift. It depends upon the giver. Are you willing to give them time? I gave you till Saturday. You know why you say I give you till Saturday? Do come here. You already got a plan B, so don't play. If you kick me out, come, don't play. Come on, you all. Don't look at me like that. You, you know what I'm saying. Throw yourself on the floor and say, you know what? This is it. If you don't forgive me, I'm still going to be faithful. Or I'm still going to be this. Because I'm sick of this cancer. I'm sick of this disease. And I need help. Would you find in your heart to do that? Amen. People don't do that. People don't do that. Why are you taking so long? And then they put it on you. The Lord said, why are you bringing Lord? <laughs> he was bringing Lord inside. You wouldn't be doing all the shady things that you're doing in the first place. So why are you bringing God now? If God was in a mix, he wouldn't be doing all this thing. But don't use my father to beat me. You don't know I'm my father's favorite child. You don't believe me? Abraham was wrong. He lied. But the heathen king, the Lord appeared to him. He didn't even say nothing to Abraham. I'm talking about my father. He don't say nothing to Abraham. I'll I, I check you later. Uh, he appeared in a dream to the hidden king and said, you touch her, you dead. <laughs> and the man said, oh, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. 
He's the one who lied. Okay, okay. So go to my prophet and let him pray. Hey, 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 I ought to be praying for that fool. Now you want me to go to him and he going to pray for me? Yeah, because that's my child. So let me tell you something. Don't abuse a child of God and you think you're going to get away. You touch it and you're touching the anointing. See, you will not hear a preacher preach what I'm preaching. You are a child of God. Let me just ask you a question. I don't know about you. Touch one of mine. And I forget I'm saved. Touch one of mine. Come on now, preacher. It's over. You choose the place. And the weapon of your choice. I got equalizer for you, child. So if so if you being natural feel like that about your daughter or about your son, what do you think? The most powerful, yeah. the highly exalted, yeah. God, Lord Almighty, loved me so much, paid for me, died for me, washed me in his blood, called me as his own. You're going to abuse her and me and then going to tell me to beat her? All right. You know what God said? Gone. So please be careful. Be careful who you talk about. Amen. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Yes. I'm persecuting you. Mm. Uh -huh. You touch one of them, yes. you're touching yes. me. Amen. So let's just close. All I am saying is this. Stop it. Hold up, hold up, I'm going to say this. <laughs> Your mass is still in the darkness. It hasn't come up in a light. Huh? God has been gracious to you. After you hear this, you better quit it. You better quit it. Stop it. Stop it. If you're not willing to change, even God cannot help. Who say what we let him come? Huh? I can't. So my question is this. Where are you struggling with? If you are genuine, if you are genuine, God will figure out a way to supply the grace. He will. But again, I will not say stay or go. That's not my thing and all that. No, you find your grace. You find your peace. Is divorce a unpardonable sin? No. I know some churches you cannot be ordained because you are a divorce, huh? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Where sin abound, grace of God does more abound. So here is the conclusion. If you are still doing something, stop it. Grace has kept you this far. Don't take the grace of God in vain and think you smooth and you slick. You ain't smooth, you ain't slick. Now one of these days, the grace door will slam and you wouldn't know what to do. You have to ask somebody forgiveness. Look, you better get prayed up before you go ask. <laughs> I'm telling you, you better pray it up. For you. Not for her or for him. Take your time. 
pray. God. Blot out my transgression. Wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Okay, I got four minutes. Let me take one extra point here. Just because you ask forgiveness, because somebody forgive you, look here. Forgiveness does not remove all the pain and all the sorrow. It doesn't. People say time heals everything. No. Grace will. Grace will. Grace will. You know what? If he forgives you, if she forgives you, guess what? It's up to you to rebuild the trust. It is up to you to keep the door of grace open. It is up to you how to work it out. And you know what? If you have genuine repented, you wouldn't feel like you're walking on a thin ice. Right. You know why you feel walking on a thin ice? Because you still you ain't clean. You apologizing for convenience. I have no bed to lay my head. I got no food. I got no car. Come on. If I have to stay at Salvation Army, I will go sleep there. But I promise you, I repent. If I have walked to my work, I will walk, ride a bus. But I'm serious about it. Face it. God will help us. And I have seen families with genuine repentance huh, restored. Restored, restored, restored. I have seen the folks who ain't serious gone apart. Life goes on. Life goes on. So my closing statement, in this life, we have hurt someone. Someone has hurt us. What are we going to do about it? Father, I thank you. I have poured my heart out in this one. It is only you and your spirit can work. You know the hearts. You mend the hearts. You heal the broken heart. You are the one giver of grace. So I'm praying for both parties. Those who have been hurt, those whom they have hurt, that we will find your grace to do what is right. Thank you, Lord.